right, so let's spend a little time on the Jeep and see what's going on. Um, so the good, the bad, the ugly. So um, the bad is got a broken motor mount. The good is uh, Brown Dog Off-Road makes a, I think it's Brown Dog Off-Road. Anyway, there's some aftermarket motor mounts that use the other four bosses on each side of the engine. So we'll be getting that because that's a $500 solution to a new engine. First, we're going to get it running and see what we got, though, because there's a lot of oil in the tailpipe, and that means we've either got an engine on its last legs anyway. Um, anyway, we'll, we'll see what we got. Um, we do have uh, 33 by 1250 tires, and we've got a Rough Country lift kit in place. I don't know exactly what size it is. Uh, probably three, four inches, just kind of ballparking it. Maybe four. I don't know. It's nice to have a little lift kit in there. Um, we're still hard stuck on the, the tire, and... We don't seem to have any fuel getting to the engine, so um, I went ahead and bought an Elm 327 interface that should play nice with my um, iPhone, and we're going to see what codes it's throwing. I expect it's throwing a laundry list of codes right now, um, but I want to see what's going on. I want to see if there's an excuse for the uh, fuel pump. All right, so we got that. And seen seen better days, but hey, it's a Jeep. So OBD Fusion is an app that I already own. I don't think it's the best one. So simple Wi-Fi. Connect. Uh, all right, so we got to go find the eye. Uh, this is just a shitty system. Wi-Fi OBD. All right, so we're connected to the 327. Try again. Okay. Try again. There it goes. That's why I didn't like this last time. It says we're connected. Now it says we're not connected. All right, I'm going to stop the video and figure out if I can, I'll, I'll mess around with this. All right, I still don't have any fuel pump, so I'm just going to move on. I'm going to take the bumper off because right now the bumper is pinching the tire. So I used my new DeWalt 20 volt impact wrench to get the top ones off. That was awesome. Unfortunately, I don't have a 3 8 driver or a half to 3 8 converter. So um, I'm going to make do with what I got which is my 
impact driver and a T55 socket, which will get the two star bolts on the bottom. So I'm using the ratchet to break it loose. And once it's broken loose, I'll take it apart with this. I've got a bucket that I'm putting all the bolts in. can't find anything bigger than a one pound hammer, so this will have to work. And it will. The really impressive thing is there's just not a whole lot of damage to the bumper itself. hoping once that bumper came out of here that I would um, be able to turn the steering, but that's not the case. Oh yeah, that's why. I mean, there is a kink in the frame, so right now it's a 50-50 toss-up if we're looking at a frame swap or if we can repair this frame. Uh, I've already located a couple of replacement frames. And, uh, you know, we'll do what we need to do. And there's a broken engine mount. But again, that, that's not that bad. I, I honestly think we could pull this out and put a plate in here to um, support it. But, yeah, track bar is bent. I mean, as they say, ain't shit gone nowhere down here. Um... It really bent just kind of at the axle point, which is somewhat surprising, but hmm. I mean, honestly, I'm surprised the damage isn't worse than it actually is. The suspension took a lot of beating and um, it's really, uh, I, I honestly th thought it'd be a lot worse, but that's part of the reason I bought this one is I just didn't think the damage was that bad. Uh, oh yeah, that's why the steering won't turn. It's all jacked up, so that's gonna have to be replaced. But you know what, we need to get the frame down first and then we can deal with the shit down here. Um, in the meanwhile, if it needs to move, it's gonna have to move with the tow truck, so yeah. Um, we'll have to shop for a frame shop first. So you can kind of see what's going on right there. I mean, this just got pushed up and in. So it kind of buckled right in this area. Um, yeah, and 
that's why the steering won't move. The steering shaft is bent, so that'll have to be replaced. And again, that's not the end of the world. Um, the bigger issue right now is we don't have any fuel pump, so, I mean, we, we have no fuel pump. So that's why it won't run. Um, that's going to have to come off. Might as well take it off now. Now you can see a little bit more of the damage. Um, it really, it pulled this over a little bit, but it really pushed this back. And the good news is the damage is really just limited to this front quadrant. So 
So you got a little pushback here. Then by the time we get back here, we really don't have much going on. And yeah, I mean, that's a pretty nasty buckle there. But again, I think it's fixable. Um, and yeah, it ripped it off the bosses on the engine. But again, I still think it's fixable. All the way around. Stupid fucking exhaust routing. shift linkages are all jacked up that's really good no actually it's really not good let's take it out of park for a second and see what happens boy I sure hope they didn't drag it here in gear but that's what it looks like might have happened oh well we'll burn that bridge when we get to it oh yeah that's bent so that's part of the problem is our shift linkage is bent. What the hell actually shifts this thing? Yeah, I really should look for a not manual because I wouldn't be dealing with this right now if I had. engaged so
So that's it for today. I appreciate everybody watching. Eh, I'm going to pull the Copart sticker off. That'll be fun. So, yeah, they were using conventional oil. Actually, you know what? I'm going to save that because I will want this for something else. Let me just take a picture of it.
So, seeing as it's going to a body shop anyway, I'm going to pull all of the carpet out and put it in the bus so it's out of the way. Okay, so we're going to have It'll be easier to work on if there's not a bunch of carpet and shit in here.
Yeah, the tub looks really good. There's no there's no bends or kinks in the tub. It's all forward of the it's it's, it's all on the driver's side forward of the firewall. I think I got it in neutral, but honestly I can't tell because this won't stay still. And that's one of the casualties. That needs to be a cable anyway. So, yeah, we got to solve the fuel pump problem because that's what's causing it not to want to start. So, no steering because of the shaft jammed, no transfer case shifting, which really means we need a flatbed tow. So, I'm going to call around to some... Uh, body shops because that's the next step is to figure out what it's going to cost to pull the frame out and if the frame is not repairable then we'll do a frame swap and um, yeah